Hi everybody, it is May 29, 2019. In this video I'm going to go through some alerts, um, give you some information regarding updates on the Arkansas River flooding, show you what has happened within the last 24 hours, as much as I could gather, and I'm also going to be reading from weather modification patents listening to meteorologists and others in what they are saying well it reminded me of those weather modification patterns but first I'll start with your officials have given you an update I guess within the last hour um, on the Arkansas River flooding I will link below to everything yes you are getting more rain Oklahoma Arkansas they're not letting up, boy. They are not letting up. Slow motion disaster <clears throat> along Arkansas River. Every large community will see major flooding. Will see. Not possible. Not potential. Not may be. You will see major flooding within seven to ten days. Within the next week to 10 days, a swift moving water from weeks of heavy rain challenges Arkansas's aging levee system. Yes, some levees have been breached already. More are going to be breached. So more heavy rain is on the way. Record flooding is also creating havoc in Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, Northeast Oklahoma, from that local heavy rainfall that is manufactured by man and the swollen rivers that have also been manufactured by man. One death in Arkansas attributed to the flooding, 64 years old, he ignored a barricade and drove his minivan into floodwaters. I'm reading an awful lot about people ignoring barricades and then dying in their cars. Um, I'm not sure if that is driven uh, by a, a propaganda to get people to obey authority, obey the authoritative signs, but people are dying. So, And sinkholes. Sinkholes are opening up. So when you are driving through a flooded area, you could hit a sinkhole because you won't see it. Arkansas Department of Emergency Management said floodwaters have already overwhelmed a levee in Logan County, mostly farmland, and one in Perry County. Van Buren, Arkansas Police Chief Jamie Hammond warned residents in the most vulnerable areas, not only of potential flooding, but also of snakes, other dangerous animals fleeing the rising waters. You want to talk? You want to talk? Oh. My God, it's probably a third of the country undergoing chaos and well, it's only increasing in size. But this has been going on for so long. Months. Months. Of flooding out areas. This is our farm. This is our far farm just over the border from Fort Smith, Arkansas. In Oklahoma. Another farm gone. In Fort Smith, where some homes actually... I believe that's the area, or was it town and country? Town and country might be part of Fort Smith, I'm not sure. Town and country had hundreds of homes flooded, and that was the area where the residents were very angry because they didn't get a warning to evacuate. Hundreds of homes with no warning to evacuate. Fort Smith homes also flooded, Officials shut down two bridges over the Arkansas River, closed schools. Water was already creeping into homes in Pine Bluff, 
It's taking a long time to rise, taking a long time to fall. Oklahoma uh, expressing, listen to this, expressing confidence that a 70-year-old levee system would protect Sand Springs and West Tulsa. This is uh, a Army Corps of Engineers. Here, the mayor of Tulsa said the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers plans to continue releasing 275,000 cubic feet of water, which is flooding out a lot of people already. And if they increase that to 305, which they have already warned you guys that they could do that. But um, here, the mayor said on his Facebook page, yeah, the number could increase depending on the rainfall. So you're getting more heavy rain. While expressing confidence that a 70-year-old levee system would protect Sand Springs and West Tulsa, he strongly urged residents to evacuate. The levees have never been tested like this. Okay, so if they've never been tested like this, why are you so confident that this levy system won't be breached? But here he says, if anything were to go wrong, the amount of time to evacuate could be minutes, not hours. Okay, so what you going to do? Levies are already being breached, and are you going to sit and wait? and only have minutes to evacuate. Uh, my heart goes out to all of you having to deal with this. You know, think about how many people in our country right now are undergoing the loss of homes and businesses, loved ones. Think about all of the farms. Think about all of these, the wildlife. Think about those who are below the Oroville Dam. You know, it's, well, we're living in unprecedented time when we're finding out you cannot rely on your government officials and you really need to assess um, your situation and then take action. It is very hard for people to evacuate. That, 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 that's not an easy thing to do. Um, anyway, so three inches or of rain, I guess it was supposed to be, of rain in some parts of the state through Thursday and warns of a potential for catastrophic flooding. You what have, what's going on right now? Catastrophic flooding. Mississippi, floodwaters have swamped 860 square miles north of Vicksburg. And there is an area of Mississippi that is literally sitting in water and have been for months. The backwater area. Here, the current forecast suggests the water won't drain significantly significantly from the backwater area in Mississippi until July at the earliest. Oh my God. Why? Because they didn't have pumping, a pumping system. So that area gets flooded often. Army Corps of Engineers meeting this week with residents of Butte La Rose and Morgan City. Uh, all of you face potential flooding with the opening of the Morganza Spillway on Sunday. It's going to happen. And flooding will. It's not if. You will get flooded when they open the Morganza Spillway. Uh, it's really remarkable what's happening.
The Mississippi River flood is at the longest lasting in over 90 years since the great flood of 1927 that killed hundreds. While this flood does not match that catastrophe in terms of longevity, it rivals it. In Vicksburg, Mississippi, right outside of Jackson, the river went above flood stage in mid-February and has remained the same ever since. Water the Mississippi is just not receding. Well, I'm feeling pretty sad right now. I don't have a home right now to go to right now. We seen it on TV that it was coming, and we seen the path. And so we decided to all leave, and we waited it out, and then we came back, and this is what we come back to in the families. This was last night. Listen to this. It threatened more Americans today. Think about this. For 12 straight days, at least eight tornadoes every single day have been reported across the central plains in the Midwest. Now, that is the longest stretch of its kind in nearly 40 years. That's right. And this dangerous weather is blamed for 15 deaths in the past two weeks. In the past 30 days, there have been more than, get this, 500 reported tornadoes. CBS This Morning national correspondent Jerika Duncan is outside Linwood, Kansas, where a massive tornado touched down just yesterday. Jerika, what's it look like on the ground there? Good morning. Incredible images as the sun is starting to come up. Where I'm standing is where one of the largest wholesale greenhouses stood here in the Midwest. But you can see that it was clearly in the direct path of this tornado, almost overturning a couple of delivery trucks. You can see the one behind me. There's debris spread everywhere as, long, as well as flower pots. A business that was once in this community more than 40 years is now forced to start from scratch. Oh, my gosh. A nearly mile-wide tornado ripped through Kansas Tuesday, destroying at least a dozen homes just outside Linwood. Look at that! Oh, oh my God! Damaging winds flipped cars and pulled down trees and power lines. Here's our living room. Dina Duffin and several of her neighbors lost their homes. It's all gone. Hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to salvage some stuff. We didn't lose everything. We didn't lose our lives. To the west, Lawrence was one of the hardest hit areas. We took cover in the corner of the basement by the concrete wall, and we heard the upstairs just blow up, and water started rushing in from, from up above. At least 12 people were brought to Lawrence Memorial Hospital for tornado-related injuries. Crews at Kansas City International Airport cleaned up thousands of pieces of debris into the night, warning one piece in an engine can be catastrophic. All of a sudden, it's like rapid-fire machine gun hitting the side of the house. Tornadoes were reported from Colorado to New Jersey, pummeling parts of Pennsylvania. Things that were in the bedroom are in the dining room, doors off their hinges. Yeah, it just did a number. The National Weather Service has received more than 900 reports of tornadoes so far this year. That's up more than 200 than on average. Okay, um, look at this tornado. Sorry manufactured. This is not a natural tornado. Um, I also just saw what, what is all this? Oh, uh, maybe insulation? I'm not, okay, it's probably insulation. Well, Pittsburgh, now you're looking at some video. This is Sarver Road in Buffalo Township. That's where more than four and a half inches of rain fell in that area. We know that several people had flooding in their basements. To the west, officials declared a state of emergency in Zulianople. This morning we are hearing that people are being rescued from flooding in Harmony. Lindsay Ward is live with the latest in Butler County this morning. Lindsay, tell us what you're hearing. 
Well, Lisa, we moved to a different area of Harmony, and the flooding here, I can tell you, is just absolutely devastating. Once you take a look at a house here to my left, you can see half of it is literally submerged behind these homes where I'm standing at on Hartman Road is Conoquinessing Creek and that creek has overflowed and that water is literally just flowing along the road here on Hartman and it is just across numerous homes. We've been told that there have been some rescues here. We've also been told there's some people staying inside their homes for the time being. A lot of different things kind of floating around here with that water and over here is Porter Cove. And you can just see how fast the water is moving over here. And then even farther around, if you could even get an idea, this is a field and the road, but it doesn't even look like a road. It's completely disappeared. We're near Jackson Township. So to give you an idea um, of how close we are to that area. Now, I so a lot of areas, unprecedented. No, we have never, ever lived this. Kansas town pick up after a twister hits and millions of people could see severe weather this afternoon and that's quite right based on what I saw on radar tornado warning and storms jolt New York region what New York City relatively calm during the day today but tonight could see a repeat of last night with thunderstorms bringing heavy rain, damaging wind, possible large hail, and yes, maybe even tornado activity in New York City and New Jersey. A rare tornado warning startled the New York region on Tuesday night, sending people scurrying for shelter as thunderstorms descended New Jersey, a tornado touched down near Stanhope, uh, a tornado touched down in Morgantown, Pennsylvania, a town 50 miles west of Philadelphia. Um, look at how, how diseased these trees are. All right. Uh, buzzing with notifications about 9 p.m. yesterday. National Weather Service issued tornado and severe thunderstorm warnings for parts of northern New Jersey, Staten Island, which is a part of New York City. Um, well, I, I would say, being a New Yorker, unheard of. And yes, here we go for the flooding upstate New York. Good morning, the water level was just below this lip here. So it has come down, but... The damage is already done. Standing in inches of water, Gary Feely is giving us a tour of his flooded basement. We had a chest freezer over here. Obviously, I had to get that out and put it up on blocks. Feely has rented the home here on Cooper Street in Olcott for the past five years. His yard, garage, and basement are all underwater. This is by far worse than 2017. The goal now to salvage anything he can. My water, hot water tank, it's not going to work because it's underwater. The furnace is not going to work because it's underwater. Niagara County emergency crews were right outside Feely's home on Tuesday, placing thousands of sandbags along the water's edge. Just as it's been coming up, we're just trying to meet the demand. The sandbags are one tactic. Additional pumps are yet another. The goal is to get all of this water back out into the lake. I'm told the biggest problem right now is the wind. It's been a really weird wind today. Like we have. Okay, remember him saying that. A really weird wind. I haven't experienced splash over like this yet. The pumps and sandbags aren't a permanent solution. Emergency crews know more is needed to prevent future flooding. Neighbors yeah. like Gary. Uh, here's Rochester, Greece. By the way. That video that I posted yesterday showing you Greece, I thought it was Greece. No, uh, there's a Greece, New York. I didn't know that. It's in Rochester County. It was moving day for Hage and Abbott onto Edgemere Drive in Greece. If the weekend was any indication, today was supposed to be ideal. Yesterday was beautiful. I was hoping today would be just as beautiful. And then it just started raining. We couldn't. 
believe what just accumulated in a few hours. While there is no major property damage for Abbott yet, a flight attendant late for takeoff is fighting the tide again. Her home already flooded three times in 2017. There's no way I can leave. As you can see, the waves can only you, you're, you can only take so much before something's going to break. Closing out a sunny and successful Memorial Day weekend, some ham. Do you see the trees? They're not moving at all. They are not moving at all. And they're talking about this weird wind. And look at this lake. The residents along the lake shore were left stunned and looking for assistance. In a day, because like a couple days ago, it was fine, but now it's just... Paulette Veltz moved into her Hamlin home along the lake last November. She says the levels have increased dramatically since then. Hopefully that there can be some kind of control uh, uh, that helps all of us. Time to come live here, see how they enjoy it. That's Bob Jones's advice to those in charge of combating the lake levels. It's been uh, hell for the last two years, three years, and we need some, we need some help. Not, we don't need any more talking, we need doing. Well, you need to do some research, sir. I'm sorry to say you need to do some research to find out what truly is going on. And everybody needs to not listen to this crazy person. Ocasio-Cortez uses viral weatherman to mock GOP on climate change. That video that I posted yesterday showing the meteorologist who got pissed because people were tweeting, um, wanting to go back to the original broadcast, which was the bachelor, Bachelorette, while they were having tornado warnings in the area. So, nut job. Sorry. This is, this is uh, your poster child for a fraudulent human being. She is given a script, she goes out there, and she can talk pretty sometimes. She has no idea what the hell she's talking about. And she has, she is absolutely, and look, do I have evidence that the United Nations, you know, has chosen her to be the, uh, the center for the push on the Green New Deal, which, by the way, certainly was not um, drafted by this woman, and it was not drafted by those working for her. It was drafted years ago by the United Nations. So she has been propped up and she's the one who is pushing the Green New Deal, which is pushing Agenda 2030. We all know that this climate change, it's like, what is so hard these days is that you can have mountains of evidence that, that the IPCC, United Nations Intergovernmental, not Interscience, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, uh, how many scientists have come out and said their assessments are just, they're only worthy of the nearest garbage can. Um, but we can't get through to people. I, I, oh man, does that really, whew. well, what did she say? This is what she said about that meteorologist. This guy reminds me of every climate scientist Warning people, we have 12 years left. You know what? Someone who speaks like this, freaking out children, and it's all a lie. Oh, boy. Well, you know, there are some people who know it's a lie, and they laugh at it, and they, you know, they don't care about it. But I, I really... I don't know what to say about what this world has become. And the world, you know, is not just this abstract entity. The world is comprised of human beings. So when I say I don't know what, how the hell did this world become 
what it is. I'm talking about people. I'm talking about people who accept lies, people who will not engage in any research, people who don't care about facts and evidence anymore, people who just don't care. People's lives are being destroyed. So this nut job is going on with that 12 years. Yeah. So this guy reminds me of every climate scientist warning people, we have 12 years left to cut emissions in half before our future is irreversibly damaged and all the GOP wants to do is yell about communist cow farts. Jesus. These are our national leaders. It's repulsive. Well, here, another meteorologist. I've never seen that before. Oklahoma weather stuns meteorologists with bizarre tornado coming from the ground. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Helicopter storm chaser Jim Gardner was stunned while chasing a north central funnel cloud that made its way west of El Reno to Guthrie, Oklahoma. The condensate was coming out of the trees like an upside down waterfall. The funnel cloud floated over several west central Oklahoma cities, falling apart and then tightening up over and over. Condensation coming off of the trees and the ground below. The tornado seemed to be literally sucking it up from the ground. There's still strong rotation on the north end of this wall cloud. I would not be surprised to see a uh, funnel any minute now. It's just ripping into that thing. Meteorologists in general have a tendency to get overly, overly excited during a storm. Such was the case tonight with the exchange between Payne and Gardner. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that, David. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on, Jim. Can you zoom in on that? Hang on, folks at home. Here's the video on YouTube. It, it, man, this form just like bam, and it just moved up to the front here. Look at that! Look at that inflow cloud coming off the. Look at! Look at! Look at that! Look at that, Dave! Look at the condensate coming up off the ground. Hang on! Hang on! Hang on! Hang on! Hang on! Zoom into that, Jim. Hang on, everybody at home. Zoom into that. That. Yep! 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 Zoom in! Zoom in! Zoom in! It's, it's trying to spin, spin David. It's, it's trying, trying to spin. spin. Oh my gosh. Who's, Who's right, right there? there? Okay. okay. Wow. wow. Look at that. That is it's coming trying out of to spin. spin. That, that is, is coming out of the trees, trees everybody. That, that is something. Right now, streets go It's coming from the flooded waters. And uh, back on Kafka Winston World. Even before I left Great Barrington, so it must have been 2011 or 2012, I posted videos on patents that, in the patent, it said they can use these microwave um, frequencies to pull humidity from even a small body of water to produce a cloud. All right, um, weather control patents, pages, weather control patents. Here, weather modification by artificial satellite. And once again, my highlighting was taken off. Great. Well, and it didn't come off this one, but method of increasing the likelihood of precipitation by the artificial induction introduction of seawater vapor into the atmosphere windward of an airlift region method of producing fresh water utilizing modification of air mass conditions by injecting seawater into solar heated air to evaporate seawater into the atmosphere and increase the air water vapor content to increase the ability of the air to absorb increased quantities of water vapor and ambient temperature and thereafter lift the treated air to sufficient altitudes to produce convective instability, cumulative clouds, 
uh, cumulative. Um, cumuliform clouds and precipitation. Um, I'm going to go through some of these. Method of weakening a tornado. Method and device of weakening tornado. A system for facilitating cloud formation and cloud precipitation. Yes, facilitating cloud formation and cloud precipitation includes a controller and a beam emitter. Emit a beam to form charged particles within an atmospheric zone containing water vapor. The charged particles enhance the formation of cloud condensation nuclei such that water vapor condenses on the cloud condensation nuclei forming cloud droplets. Automated wide-ranging anti-hail protection method relates to hail warning and prevention. Now, we have the technology and they have so enhanced our weather, our radar, um, our weather system, why are people not getting warnings? Because we're at war and you are to be destroyed. Method and apparatus for destabilizing tornadoes and reducing the strength and even destroying tornadoes are disclosed in that patent. Fog removal system, uh, our military has been removing fog for a very long time they did it in Vietnam. Any fog, when a plane was needing to land, they removed the fog. Hail warning and prevention, another, or that might be a duplicate um, patent here. A technique to mitigate storms using arrays of wind turbines. Change the track and intensity of atmospheric storms using arrays of wind turbines which are being built for power generation. Those wind turbines are used for weather modification. One of the reasons why I'm doing this is there are so many different methods that they can use to create what we are living now. Uh, dissipate cold air system for facilitating cloud formation and cloud precipitation. Emit a beam to form charged particles within an atmospheric zone containing water vapor. The charged particles enhance. Shoot. Um, are we seeing duplicates? We might be. I'm sorry. An apparatus to channel large air masses for climate modification. For modifying the weather by channeling dry air masses over large bodies of water by means of an artificial barrier built at an acute angle as to the incoming dry air mass that comprises a low air resistance belt to continue air movement and a high resistance belt to deflect incoming dry air into the low air resistance belt that terminates at a large body of water. You see that very often off the coast of California. And what's that wall? Frequencies. Yeah, once over a large body of water, the dry air mass will readily collect moisture released by the large body of water by evaporation and then be taken by prevailing trade winds overland where the moisture will be deposited in the form of rain. So with these electromagnetic frequencies they can they can create a wall so that you don't get any rain and they can they can actually collect waters from bodies of waters and move it evaporate that into the atmosphere, move it to dump, well, in, our, in Oklahoma, in Arkansas, over the Mississippi, Missouri, Arkansas River. Water alteration, structure, applications, and method for environmental 
alteration. Um, method and system for accelerating dispensation of a landfalling tropical cyclone. A system for accelerated dispensation of a tropical cyclone or a hurricane. Process and apparatus for reducing the intensity of tropical cyclones, moderating the intensity of a hurricane in regions of the seas that are host to the oil and gas industry. So when they have, you know, out in the oceans and they're drilling for oil, do you think that the oil and gas industry is not using weather modification to ensure that their um, their equipment will not get destroyed? Of course they are. Now I'm going to end with this, but there are so many more. Here's another page of a whole lot, and I might uh, focus on this page as well as re-highlighting this weather modification by artificial satellites. And this is a method that has been in use for a very long time. And this relates to those electromagnetic frequencies, the microwaves, the infrared, the uh, extremely low frequencies, the high frequencies that we have been seeing on satellite. But concept and model for utilizing high frequency or radar or microwave producing or emitting devices to produce effect, create or induce lightning or light speed or visible to naked eye electromagnetic pulse or pulses, acoustic or electronic uh, or ultrasonic shock waves or booms in the air, space enclosed or upon any object or mass to be used solely or as part of a system, platform, or device, including weaponry, weather modification, using high frequency sound waves, such as radar and microwaves. The uses for this are mainly in military weaponry, weather modification. This is very high energy weapon and is capable of great damage if not used properly. Electronic systems with electromagnetic pulse, which is the lightning, and break the missile apart. They can, this is used also for missile defense and aiming at a nuclear missile to disable all electrical and electronic systems within that uh, missile. And, but did you hear, you know, booms in the air, shock waves, and they can create uh, damage in the air in space, enclosed, or upon any object or mass. That's why we're seeing so many anomalies. That's why we're seeing uh, the damage from tornadoes that don't look like tornadoes. All right, guys, I'll link below to everything. Stay safe, everybody.